everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today is another big art quest about face, and we are painting um, y'all's most favorite guy, there it is, on TV, oh. on the HBO, Jon Snow. So this is the partner to the Daenerys Targaryen painting that we did, and really came out of uh, that you guys didn't want to just paint Daenerys, you guys wanted to paint Jon Snow too, so that's what we're doing mm. today and tomorrow. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. So he's going to be following me around with our cameras, making sure you see how I'm mixing the paint, making sure you get up closes on when we're painting in things. And so you're not missing out on any of the techniques. So you can make this at home because that's the whole point is that you paint it at home. Though mm. sometimes the point is to come and chat and see your friends. I get that. So how's everybody doing today? Really good. They're, they're excited to be here. This is, this everyone's refreshing and they're like very excited. 250, 260 we have lots of people coming in here. They're just piling in, ready to go today, painting Mr. Snow. So some crazy people are ready to paint John they're, Snow. They're we coming. learned from our last video where we got a little geeked out, excited, and accidentally did a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those of you who No are spoilers is what they were taught saying. So this is a spoiler-free show because we've learned. We listen to you, and when you say, hey, don't do it, we go, okay, we won't. You know, so <laughs> Except we, for the non-talking thing, which I'm going to continue doing until right. the end of time. So, you know, we won't we won't secretly spill the beans about how, you know, John does that really cool thing that I'm not going to talk about. Yep. Or that yep, yep, other yep. really cool thing that yep. I'm not going to talk about. Yes. Yeah, I know. But I do want to do some spoilers on how to get the traceable and how to get the references. Okay, we <laughs> do that. So if you look in the description below, um, YouTube gives you a little description thing with a bunch of space you can write things. And you see a couple lines, but then there's dots. If you open that up more, that's going to give you a link to the website page for this tutorial. And on that page is going to be a PDF of the traceable that you are just welcome to download and use if you don't feel like free handing this in. And also a link to uh, the references. So mm -hmm. I found the original uh, uh, photo from HBO that this photo was edited from. So if you wanted, you guys had talked about wanting to do his brown eyes. Mm. That's where that is. I found that for you. So you could have it. I'm going to do the reference that we voted on, but that way you guys can do it your way. Either mm -hmm. way. All good. There's so many, there's, I, there's so many good wishes that have been coming in here. I just, I, I appreciate everybody putting all of your love and wishes in here on the canvases. Thank you guys so much for those. Those are good. Yeah. There, there's, there's, Jennifer had a good wish. She mm. wished that, uh, that, that. Um, Daenerys and Jon Snow would happily ever after and make little baby dragons. Let's ship them. We're gonna, we're gonna ship them. We're gonna ship them. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put good love out there for uh, Nikita and all those out there in in that exam time who are mm -hmm. having man. Good luck with those exams. Good luck. And on the canvas we have a happy birthday. Oh today yeah, we do for Chrissy's grandma yeah wishes for healing uh for chelly and her family elizabeth wishes for good and outcome and health for her husband chelsea's family could just use some general healing strength and hope and then holly her stepdad could use some strength he's been through a lot and of course now the shipping of daenerys and Jon snow <laughs> <laughs> so i'm putting the reference that you guys voted on right here um, and I'm going to tape this over. So I have this to look at while I'm working. We have a little picture in picture one too. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't get to use that one yet. So if you're like, if, if you're all, if you're all melty when it comes to the snow, to the snowman, you're like, Ooh, <laughs> you just can't get enough of him. Well then oh. look, we got picture in picture in picture. I just got that. That's so sad. Well, <laughs> the first thing <laughs> I'm going to do is paint in the background. And what I want you to do is just grab a nice brush. This is a nine by 12 canvas. Right here, canvas board actually. And over here we have our paint colors. I have Prussian blue, I have alizarin crimson, zinc white, acrylic glazing liquid. This one is satin, but you could get gloss or matte. It's just, just, just that product. Burnt umber, yellow ochre, titanium white. I have some black paint, whatever bl black you have. And I'm doing the blue in, in this photo so I'm going to use a little phthalo blue to get that but you could just do just these colors and be fine and here is if this helps the reference that I said that this you can see it was taken from you cannot photo edit it and fool me where'd you go Go over there okay oh, sorry oh yeah oh yeah yeah I so see. that's what you guys were looking for again the link is on the website just go to the page yeah um, signing up is free 
No, you know, so it's all good. Okay. I think I'm ready to go. Are you guys ready to go? We're definitely, definitely let's, ready Let's start because we've got two days here. We're going to we're gonna go do this in about two days. We're going to slow down and really just enjoy our time with this and talk about these methods. Now, I have a number 10 bright here. This is Goldilocks. Of course, it's my brush. But listen, what you want is a number 10 bright. I've got a firm filament with a nice edge and it doesn't soak in too much water. So that's what you're looking for out of your brush. I'm going to take a smidge. And see what I mean by smidge is just a teeny tiny bit over to my white. And I want a very soft gray. This is the gray I'm looking for right here. And I'm just going to paint in my canvas. Now I didn't, I'm going to make sure my words go into that. I didn't mix it with the palette knife because I want slight variations. I want this background to be painterly. If that makes sense. So I'm going to make sure the background is painterly. And that means that I can see the brush strokes and little variations in the paint color. And that's going to give kind of a nice artistic look to the simple background. If you're doing a simple background, sometimes doing it this way can add a little more interest to that area of your painting. Use a little of my liquid gloss here to extend my paint. And again, I have watercolor pencil wishes written on here, so they're going to blend right into the, uh, the paint. But it will color it whatever the pigment is that I put down. Whole canvas, just paint this, paint this color. Whole 9 by 12. Mm, just painting in that, that. Winter has come background. Dude, winter is just going to be here for two days. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because well, then we have the uh, 12 days. Well, this is Texas. Oh, Christmas, so. You know, and, and Texas generally gets like, we get two days of winter at a time. Like, you know, so it'll, it'll get cold for a couple days and then it'll be 80 degrees. And then, um, and by cold, I mean like it might break 50. Yeah. And nobody's you know, ready for that nonsense. No. No, no. If winter came to to Texas, to Houston, it I mean, it it would be worse than, you know, it, it, it hitting King's Landing. Like like, you know, an inch of snow here and like everybody everybody would 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 crash their cars. The the bridges would freeze, nobody would know. It would be it would be the apocalypse. Yeah, I think King's Landing is definitely going to be a snow apocalypse city. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're at all ready. They are a bunch of completely warm weathered people like us who are not ready for any ice or snow no so you can kind of see the effect i'm getting here is very soft because i'm working wet into wet the paint is sort of blending into itself but they're not it's not all a uniform value so it's very like you can tell that it's painted and brushed and you want that sometimes i'm just loading up little bits at a time Enjoying my painting process. It's good to paint, good to relax and have a little art time. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just it, there's a, there's a lot of people who are up north and mm -hmm. they're like, oh no, you can come up here and visit us. We have the cold. We have a lot of it. Yeah, I don't have the jacket. <laughs> No, we let uh, we uh, uh, <laughs> there's some folks from Canada that are like we know we know we know winter. Come on up here. Yeah, I know it's, Canada knows. It's like winter. no, it's like I had to buy a jacket. <laughs> it it you know it's like <laughs> I I I the, we've been to the northern northern uh, territories. We lived in we lived in Vancouver. Yeah, that's not really the cold part. Of Canada, no, though. no. Vancouver has snow for like a second, like two weeks. They have that perfect amount of snow where you're still enchanted by the snow before you start to like, oh, the snow. See, I, I think that Vancouver is sort of like Winterfell. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like this, you know, the, it's the fantasy version of living in the snow because mm -hmm. they have that wonderful. So then morning. Ontario is above the wall. <laughs> I wonder how they would feel about that. Where the wild things are. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's Quebec. But you get my point. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there, there may Please, be. Please, Canada, we love you. We love okay, you. Okay, yes. breathe. Hockey, hockey, yay. Yeah, you remember, you burned down our capital twice. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally, totally, like, we totally get to, like, do this, right? It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you can kind of uh maybe we'll do a close-up on this i just want to point out how uneven and again that word painterly this background is so it's very soft and it's got a little movement to it so we've got this static background but yet there's this movement and feeling to it that's really rather lovely and it's you know just a nice soft gray so that's just something to aim for and to think about. I'm going to sip my mm-hmm. water. How is your background looking? Uh, very good. I, and let's see here. Uh, there, You had some wishes here. Uh, Dawn says she, she wishes you a nice, happy, warm Christmas. Uh, oh, thank you. It, it, up in Wisconsin, it is it is not so warm. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Colder there. Yeah. Colder there than here. Well, I'm going to dry this okay. with my hair dryer. Uh, so, you know, and we could let it air dry and just chat, but I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer. You guys, um, talk to John for I, a second. I will say I'll hello be right back. while you do that. I think I can. Hold on a second. Hey, look. Oh, I did it. Okay, cool. Turn that back down. So, wow. Thanks, guys, for coming and hanging out today. Uh, today's a special. It's not exactly a, a two-parter, but it is the second part of the, uh, it is, it is a, an accompaniment to our Daenerys painting, which we did earlier. So, you know, I know uh, you guys uh, probably saw that. That was great. We did that earlier. It did have a spoiler, and sorry about that. But um, thank you guys for coming on this one. We really appreciate you coming and hanging out with us today. It's really, you know, we uh, we love to get together and paint. It'll be a two-parter. So today we're gonna we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna get about halfway through it, and then we'll get back together tomorrow and do the other half of it. That way, it's a little easier on everybody. So there's uh, trying not to to put a lot of pressure to try to get it all done at once. Um, and uh, don't forget to hit the social media buttons: the like, comment, subscribe, and share buttons. I always forget to. Remind everyone to hit those, but we appreciated it. It uh, lets everybody know that you guys are here and having a good time and liked what we saw. Uh, uh, you can check out our website where we have a list of uh, all of the resources like the traceable, the list of materials. You back Woo. there? I am here. Oh, very good. Getting my stuff. Oh, good. So what do, you, what, what do you have there? I have the traceable. Oh, and I was just telling them they can get that off our website. Just right off of our website. That is there. It's in a PDF. Now, what did you put behind that? Hold on. Well, Show I haven't me. put it yet. Oh, okay. So my first thing is I'm going to put the traceable where I want it. Okay. I'm going to be kind of like with our uh, expressionist man. We're going to be sort of loose down here. At some point, we're going to do some highly detailed, but there's it's going to loosen up in this area. And so I want to leave a little room for that. And I want to make sure I leave a little room at the head, you know, that I'm not too up on anything. Yeah. I really didn't want to do this half cut off head portrait. So I went ahead and. You framed him. <laughs> I finished him out. And, and again, I have the full head reference, so I'm ready for it. So I'm going to tape this down first, just at the top. Just at the top at first. And then I'm going to take this serial transfer paper. And I'm going to place this carefully under my drawing so that it's going to be wherever my lines are. That way it can transfer the image. No, I, hmm. Now, it's a, it, there, there's, a, there's a right side and a wrong side to that paper. There is. That's a very good point, John. So if you see the very intensely blue side. Yeah. That's and then the, this side that's kind of creamy. You want the side that's intensely pigmented to be against the canvas. Yeah. And I'm going to tape this in a couple places so that it doesn't move. Otherwise, I'll get like a kind of shadowing where there's double lines. Oh, yeah. So it'll kind of shift around a little bit. Yeah. And I'm also going to take a minute and tape this down in two more places itself. And what this does is allow me to transfer this image on without everything shifting on me. This, it was a lot of work for me to get in. Mm -hmm. This is not like an easy kit for me to do. For some people, it's easy. not my easiest kit. And so once I finally get to a finished drawing that I'm proud of, 
I really, really want it to last a long time. Yeah. So I really like using this method of creating drawings. It it works really well for me. I'm gonna bring out this little brow here. Come down the face. So I'm just gonna trace over every line that I made, and I'm gonna actually put my glasses on so I see well. Woohoo! Glasses. Oh, it's so much better. Being able to see is always super exciting. To me. Very positive to that artist experience. What? Being able to see. Uh, yes, though there are many artists who have limited sight, so, you know, don't let it stop you. No. I'm going to just go around and just trace all of this, transfer all of this. Um, a tip, I'm not doing it because I had this sharpened pencil ready to go, but if you have trouble remembering where you put lines, if you use um, something that's colored, like a colored pencil or pen, then you can see where you've been. Mm. Now, that serial paper is reusable, right? Yes. Okay, Several cool. uses out of it. I have a link to the sample pack that I use, but it comes in rolls, and you can get it at Office Depot and other places besides online. Now, on the hair, I want to be real light about this because when we do this hair, first we're going to block in the shape and then work in the details. Okay. So we want to be, you know, kind of careful about that. I actually need to draw his eyebrows, but I'm going to. I'm going to very softly sketch in his chin line, even though he's got facial hair, because there's a really cool way. We're going to cover how to do this beard. So if you've been wondering how to do men's eyebrows, wondering how to do beards and facial hair, we're going to cover that. I think you're going to be surprised at, it's time intensive, but easy. So when you're doing work like this, I would say that that's actually more of its deal is that it's time intensive. More than, you know, difficult itself. Like this is three hoot, but that's because we're going to be here for a minute. <laughs> Together. <laughs> painting. Ooh, Amber says she's excited to paint facial hair. Oh, Which, yeah, it's going to be great. Well, I don't know that we've done a lot of that. We haven't, and I've been asked for it in the Big Art Quest several times, and so this was a great opportunity. One of the reasons I was excited to say yes to Jon Snow, besides the fact that I'm a fan of Game of Thrones, is that we would finally get to cover this topic. I'm just making sure. We know I get a little weird with noses. <laughs> so I'm just doing my best this time. I think I did pretty good with him. I really, really tried to see it better. Very carefully pull this off, and I will put this aside. And we'll see how the transfer went. <gasps> transfer went okay. Yeah. So if you have any areas that just you were unsure of, it's an okay time to sort of go back in using your reference and reassure yourself about those lines. Oh, see about the nose. I feel like I always do a thing with the nose. I'm going to really try. <laughs> everybody goes elfish on me. Oh, yeah? Kids get older and everybody goes elfish. And I have to tell you, for me not to do a big eye is just like so challenging. Because mm. I want to big eye everything. So really it's about, this is something that always throws me when I'm doing men's faces, is how big the brow bone is. If I'm not looking at a reference, I often forget to put these features in this context. So it's not just that men have square, more angle features. They're also like sometimes more prominent in a way that is unintuitive if you draw a lot of girls. Mm. And I think there needs to be uh, a lot more male uh, portrait artists in the world, to be quite honest, doing more, more subjects on that. Not that girls aren't fun to paint. They are. Just needs to be some more guys. Okay. So we have him in. I'm going to sip my water. And we're going to start blocking him in. That's really what we're going to do. That's the first thing that we've got to do is kind of block in our values. Our, we're going to look for our deepest colors, right, where those are at. And then we're going to look for kind of the next range up and some base skin tones. So that when we start to put him in, um, he's got this basis because you wouldn't want to, like, paint this weird little thing here and then have to paint in this black thing. It would be just super long and tedious. What super is long. Just which, which is how often you do it for hyperrealism. So there you go. 
So the, you know, everybody's really, uh, really happy to be out here today. They say everything looks really nice. Your hat Thank looks you. nice. So it's just a, it's it, the the general consensus is today is a really good day to paint. Today is a very good day to paint, and I'm so excited to see your John Snows in the Big Art Quest. Yeah. So that's a group on Facebook, and that's the place where if you're doing the Big Art Quest, either last year or this year's or next year's, mm. you go there to share your artwork with your friends. What about the year after that? Uh, we'll see how I feel. Okay. You know, I'm sure I'm going to want to do one for 2018, but I don't know how I'm going to serve it out. <laughs> so I'm going to get some of my Lizrin Crimson. I'm going to take it over towards my Yellow Ochre. And I'm going to mix some base skin tone here. Um, I'm using this very uh, edited um, image. But I also made sure that when I looked at him, he does have like... like He's much, much less White Walker here. By the way, this is not a spoiler. <laughs> this is just somebody's photo. Um, he's much less White Walker here. So I'm just going to make sure that my skin tones, um, I really felt like I saw like the cool lizard under there. So I'm going to make sure that they're cool and light. Kind of a, a, a European skin tone is what I'm going for. Gotcha. And so that, my base for that is going to be the Yellow Ochre and the Alizarin Crimson. Really, when you're doing skin tones, you're talking about making kind of um, a pink that's toned with browns. <laughs> it's really a lot of what it is. And sometimes it's just a very dark, dark pink. And then we're going to, we can gray it with both the Prussian and the Burnt Umber. But this is the base formula. And I'm going to add a little glazing medium to this. this. This will keep my paint from drying so quickly so I can make a color like this and have it be on my palette in a few minutes doing okay instead of just a little dried mountain of, of paint which is, would not be as fun all right now let's grab a brush I think I'll grab just just a block in I'm gonna grab a number eight um, cat's tongue mm -hmm. and you paint along with me you get any brush you want. You could do a number eight filbert. If you have some filberts, you could do a number eight bright. If you have a bright, you're just going to want it to be um, able to fill in the area for you. So it's all going to be, it's going to be all good. I'm tongue tied today. Are you? I don't know. It feels like it. I don't I, mean to be. No. I'm going to take a little of my Prussian blue over to my black. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tint this with this blue and it's going to cool it. Put in, <coughs> woo! When I put in these darker areas, we're really, really gonna feel it. So I'm gonna make sure that I have this. I'm gonna come just inside the area where his hair is, and this is gonna be another paint hair. And I've got all those videos on painting hair, but this is another kind of hair we're painting. It's kind of yak fur, I guess, mm. or something. Now, as I come down I, here, I don't. I'm going to be just very loose with these brush strokes. In fact, if you want to come off the shoulder and just stroke down, uh oh, what? hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're having a little little moment here with our stream. Mm -hmm. I just saw it happen. So hold on a second. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, you can turn around, and look at the camera here. I'm going to okay. give us give us just a moment. I see that our stream is having just a moment, so I'm going to take a okay. a fix. We're gonna try that again. And it is saying uh, we're back, but it is saying that we've got a, a rough video feed here. Uh oh. So uh, we're gonna, I can see it coming in there. It's saying that we've got some buffering here. So I'm not sure if uh, if we want to. It's it's it looks like it's picking up here a little bit. We can give it a try and see how it goes. Okay. And uh, but if this drops off, we may have to cut this one off a little earlier today. So All I'm right. going to keep an eye on this. But it looks like we're okay right now. Okay. If we're okay right now, we're going to persevere through. We're going to persevere through. And black, and you can see that I'm just making sure that the brush strokes just kind of come off uh, rough and loosely through here. I don't want to make a little row of them, so try and make sure that they feel loose. 
like a long neck goose. Mm. So see how I've just tapered that there. Just making sure that I've got some nice black for under that. Now, I see some of this dark value here at the neck collar. Definitely is over here. A lot of it. Actually, I'm going to add a little white to that because I think it's actually shade lighter. So I just made a mistake, but how I fix that is I'm just going to just make sure this is a slightly different value. Back into my black and my Prussian right here. Now, under his chin, very dark. So, so you can see I'm just looking for these shadow areas. There is a question. Shadow here. Sorry. <laughs> There's a qu uh, question here from Tracy about uh, the difference between yellow ochre and yellow oxide. Yeah. I, so the difference between yellow ochre and yellow oxide is yellow ochre is a natural pigment. Let me, let me make sure. I think that's true. Yes. Yellow ochre is a natural pigment from the earth like bra umber or burnt sienna. Yellow oxide is a chemical formulation of this color. Hmm. They're the same color, same hue. They're just uh, from different sources. Gotcha. And so they have slightly different characteristics. And like I, the ox, uh, the the oxide to me is is more transparent. Yeah. I'm just tapering this stroke. Yeah. And I'm not taking this all the way to the edge of my traceable because, like, you know, I'm going to be having little hairs and stuff there. So, you know, just keeping an eye on it. It looks like our uh, our internet signal has improved here, so we're back up into the we're green back. lights. Yeah, we're we're in full green lights, so we should be good here. Um, where I need to get into the corner, I'm gonna improve the flow of my paint. Load back up on the tip of my brush, and just paint in here. This little little bit. And then I've got one more. There we go. So that's pretty good. Let's get his hair in. And again, his hair has this, like, you know, basis of being dark. So let's just block the shape in. All right. Now, we're going to be doing a lot of his hair in this sort of warm color, this sort of brown, warm brown. But by putting this cool base underneath, this cool shadow, that's going to really help us build it up. So it's all about finding this form. I'm not going to get too close to the edges. All right, because I, I want to have some room to work details, but I just know I need to have this basis in. So you can see I'm kind of keeping on the inside of the edges of where my traceable is. Just keeping inside those edges. Painting this over. Gotta, gotta love that his hair goes back over his shoulder. <laughs> you push that forward just a touch there for me. Well, the palette. Yeah, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Is it good? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got it right there. You're just perfect. All right, perfect, perfect. So it's just really about making sure I've got all of this kind of working in here. Around his face a little bit. I'm going to catch a little of the top of his head here. A little of it. And just a smidge here over the side because it's v the hair over here is much more loose. So we'll have to actually work these areas pretty well. So I'm not even going to take the dark. Now he looks like he's got some crazy helmet head. Gotta love your paintings in their crazy stage. Crazy stage is the best stage of the painting. Not really. But you gotta paint these hairlines in, you gotta paint these bases in, or the character can't come together. Now, over the shoulder here, I'm gonna wipe this off. And I'm gonna start getting into more of my white. I'm gonna add even a little more blue to it as I'm going. And over the shoulder, it's much, much lighter. Right, just gonna paint that. I even round that out a bit. 
I'm just getting into my heinous lighter, lighter color. Blocking it in. And it can be very rough, everything here. We refine later. Or that's what I do. I'm going to come back here along this collar. Tommy was asking, is there a good way to learn which colors are the same? I, You know, the thing is you start reading books on uh, color theory and you start reading books on the chemistry of acrylic paint and color. Uh, Victoria Finley is an incredible resource um, who's not boring. What about your color charts? I have. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then I also teach that. Um, <laughs> I teach I teach art on YouTube. I remember There's that. Just, I, know this, I, I know this one so artist I on have, YouTube. So I have, in last year's Big Art Quest, I have a whole thing on definitely do the color charts. Make your color charts because that's going to save you the most money in your paint. Because you're going to know then at a glance everything your paint that you currently have can do. The colors it can mix and the opacity it has. So you don't buy things you don't got to buy. And there's nothing like knowing your palette intimately. And that chart does that like nothing else. And then I have a bunch of quests on color theory. And then also on top of that, Victoria Finley is very cool. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> so I'm going to curve this down like you do. And again, we sort of did this with the expressive man painting. If you remember, we just... <laughs> More, a little more black and blue here. I want a mid-tone. The expressive man painting. I mean, we don't title things well. Oh, I know. It's the worst, right? But actually, maybe we do. Because how you put the inflection on that painting <laughs> could be so, so many much. different things. A little darker. The expressive man painting. That's what he is. But, I mean, what does that mean? Was he expressive? <laughs> Was it a man painting? <laughs> Isn't it an expressive man? What is what does that mean, you know? <laughs> Pulling these down. So I'm just being loose with these strokes. And again, it's about just kind of initially you work in some of these values and some of this will be loose and some of this will be highly detailed. Now weirdly there is one heck of a shadow under this chin. Mm. It's not even kidding. And it is deep. So I will be doing skin tones all around that, but I need to get that base in, right? So I'm going to come under his chin. And I'm going to paint this dark shadow. That it's made made darker by his beard. It really is and then the, and then and also it's almost this dark in the reference as well. So mm. I felt like this was pretty true and we needed to keep that in. Now, as we're going I'm going to round this up. Well, right now he's got a crazy looking chin. Again, fixed when facial hair comes in. <laughs> I'm going to switch down in brush size to smaller brushes because it's going to be, well, I, I th actually I think I need a lot of them in with it. And then I'm going to, as I get near the features, I'll switch down. <laughs> so I'm going to first come in with sort of like a base tone. Um, I'm going to add a little of my burnt umber to this color. Oh, Trish. I have to give a shout out to her. She was like, Number two color chart in Big Art Quest num uh, 2016. <laughs> She's like, because everyone was like, where, where, where's the video? So thank you. I think uh, we'll, we'll put a, uh, uh, we'll see if we can find a link and drop it here in the chat and then uh, for that for everyone. So one of the things I do when I'm messing with skin tone is I'll take it to the piece and I'll like touch it there and see how I'm doing. Just a thing that you can do. You can actually take a smidge of your color right and mix it in and see how am I doing and I think I'm gonna need to mix a s much larger amount of skin tone because you gonna need more I'm gonna need more I'm gonna also go a little deeper into the lizard I feel see mm -hmm. so that touch thing lets you make adjustments to your formulation the reason I think skin tones give everybody such uh, anxiety is because we all know what human flesh looks like and we have a very narrow range of how we feel we can express it. That sounds so creepy when you say it like that. Mm -hmm. 
we all know what human flesh looks like. Well, <laughs> well. I mean, yeah, well, I guess, yes, we all do. But it sounds so creepy when you say it like that. I'm putting on some more white paint. <gasps> and I'm going to just press off the extra paint off of my palette knife and get a smidge of it and make my base skin tone um, in a slightly larger amount, the, the light color, so that I have enough to get through my painting. Add a titch of your brown to it. A lot of times if you pre-mix up your skin colors ahead of time when you go to paint in what you've got, you'll find it's just significantly easier. More brown. And I'm going to avoid the blue cast except where I'm putting shadows and stuff because I want this to look a different way. We wanted to do something different than what we did with Daenerys, which was the black and white. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, we're good. So again, I just, um, I'll show you again. So I come over here. So I've got my skin. See? Girls actually are familiar with this because that's how they test makeup. Oh. But you're like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of there. Okay, good. That's how you do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> you might not know that if you didn't know. I'm just making sure I got a good amount. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm adding, because I'm painting acrylics, not oils, I'm adding the uh, acrylic glazing liquid to slow down the drying time of the paint and improve blendability. And also extend it a little. There we go. Just paint this little sucker in. And I'm going to switch to like a traditional brush. This is a number six bright. Because a lot of times I'll say to you guys, I could do a number four cat's tongue. If you guys have the number four cat's tongue, it's great in this area. All I'm saying is that here I'm going to just do it with a number six bright because it's about being able to block in space. Yeah. And that's all you're really trying to do. So I've got my base skin tone here, and I'm going to start putting this on my face up here. So here's my cheek area. Got my nice little highlight going on. There's a little spot on the nose. Definitely up over the brow with this color right here. Just fill it in. And again, at this stage, it's really going to be about just getting it on. And what's real nice is the gray coming through the paint kind of reflects what's going on in this piece. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting the, the flesh tone worked in, man. He needs a flesh tone. He needs to get his base on. He needs to get his base on. And then we're going to define and adjust the base like we'll put a darker shadow under here we'll do stuff yeah this is make sure you know, his chin is rounded out there because that's crazy this is sort of that 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 ugly underpainting stage oh your painting should have a stage in acrylics um if you're painting this method the layering method that looks crazy yeah that looks really super duper crazy where you question your decision of becoming an artist. Okay. Like, I don't know that I can all. do this. This is not <laughs> working for me. Exactly. It looks like a bad It's not working. Like a kid should have painted this, not me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, wah, it comes together wah. Like in, in like, like we'll probably leave this one off today mm -hmm. where it's looking like a Oh, so jacked up. I'm getting a little more brown. Just a smidge of brown. You can even get a smidge of your blue in there, and it's going to gray my skin tone a little bit, and then that's what I'm going to put in this forward forehead area and down the brow of the nose again. And this is all going to be refined. This is just the working it out time, right? So if I were to do that with a, a little palette knife, right, if I wanted to have a base of that color to move over, so it's like my burnt umber, smidge touch of my Prussian blue to cool it get some of this glazy medium so it doesn't dry out on me otherwise I'm gonna be going dit, 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 the whole time and you're gonna be like oh I'm still gonna be ditting but less ditting flitting around like a little fairy 
So I'm going to... Cro-Magnon John. Cro-Magnon John. I'm going to get this gray in color into my paint again. And you can see it's just tinting it a little bit. And this is how I'm going to get my shadows in. Just come under his neck a little bit with this. A little bit of a shadow. And we can start talking under his uh, cheek line, which is coming down at this nice angle, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be working out. Is these little forms and shapes. If you think of the head as a ball, you're just basically shading a ball. <laughs> you should think of the head as a ball. Now I've got this brown right here and a little blue. This is like kind of so dark. Bring that right there. And then you can come under the lip. Start talking about that shadow. Under the nose. May things not go crazy with my nose this time. <laughs> I'm going to start working some of my darker values around the eyes. I'll let it go up into the eyebrow because you got to have dark under the eyebrow anyways. If you didn't know. This is been in a boxing match, match John. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I'm thinking about value sets. And I'm laying in where I have shadows because if I get those in, it's going to really help me and bring a little shadow back. You can tune it back in. Take some of this down here around the chin a little bit, blending it in. If you have trouble blending, you can always grab a little bit of glazing medium and look at that. See how it softens it out? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that stuff for this very reason. I'm just going to be darkening up this chin as I go. And again, probably having to get into a smaller brush pretty pretty imminently mm. you know let's get some of our lighter color and go ahead and make sure it's coming off the lip here there weirdly believe it or not off this chin shadow and out the corner of this eye and he's going to be blocky and weird at this stage Brilliant artists paint the whole thing in blocky. But I am not them, so we will not. Now, I'm going to switch down into this small brush. If you have, you know, a number two, or you have, I think you can probably get away with the four cat's tongue in here because it comes to such a nice point. All right, but you just want to get down into a smaller brush that lets you work the little areas. This particular one I'm showing because it's been asked about in so many of my portrait classes. This is a quarter inch filbert grass comb. Now, this particular one by Silver Brush is, I think, one of the best grass combs out there. They are not all made equal, and I think this one is the bomb diggity. Much like their quarter inch angle brush is just on point, amazing, works really well. What am I looking for? My glasses. Is that ironic? Yes, it is. <laughs> is that one of those on your head moments? So, one of those on your head moments. So, I'm getting a little of my, you know, darkening color mixed here. If I want to add a little more blue to it, I will. And let's come get a little of our shadow going. Because over here, on this side of him, things are a lot more in shadow, and I've got to start blocking that in. Come around the eye. On this side of the face, bring the shadow in a bit under the chin, and come up, and I can even come under here, where I've got to extend it out, right, where I'm trying to do something about that. One of the things I can do, he's got a really strong nasal line here. I'm going to need that, otherwise he won't have that stark Jon Snow scally face. <laughs> you want it. <laughs> I've got to figure out if I can get this nose. And then there's a shadow under the nose. And actually, this here in the nose, you start getting more into the alizarin, or even your base skin tone, because you want to warm it up. It's a shadow, but it needs to warm up.
Because can you see here, even in this edited one, how much red there is around the nose? Uh, you, well, sort of. Okay. It, you, when you, you point over there, let me, I have to scroll over. Okay, right in here. There's a lot of red around the nose. Oh, yeah. You don't want to miss that. So not only is there this shadow that you've got to contend with and this shape of a nose that you've got to contend with, which is kind of curved and comes up. I'm going to just bring this around the nostril and then up even underneath because even though there's the shadow, this red is all through here. And if you think about it for a second, you'll be like, oh yeah, noses actually are kind of like that. Especially if it's cold, especially if anything is at all going on. I'm just making sure this is there. Now as I'm coming up, I'm going to add a lot more of the light skin tone to my brush. Make sure that I'm catching some light on the bridge. Mm. Right? It's going to be a whole thing. There's some light right there. It's very interesting, the perspectives pull it on, down. on Jon Snow, you know. Hmm. You know, Raven, Raven says he's got his, you know, he's got his, his scowling face, scowly face on. Mm-hmm. And, uh... <laughs> Then, uh, Pulling a highlight uh, up under here in the eye. Nikki was like, no, no, that's his sexy brooding face. Oh, okay. And I was like, ah, those are, you know, <laughs> some different perspectives on, you know, <laughs> Mr. Snow. So, you know, he, he you know, he, he could be a, a, he could be pretty steamy as I understand it for some he, of you. Okay. Well, I don't want to, you know, interfere with that. You know, Kim, Kim was telling me that, you know. He's he he's definitely a snow melter. So he's a snow melter. He's pretty hot. Oh my goodness, Kim. Okay, so I grabbed a little of my base tone and worked it over here into this brown. Get my skin tone. See how it kind of unifies it the way I get to bring it back and forth across the same mixtures creates a skin unity. And then I'm just going to be trying to, you know, make sure that I'm. And again, I won't be doing the whole thing. It feels I'm sure it feels like I am right now, but I actually won't be doing the whole thing. I've just got to get some base information in. Then it works, and then, then I can do other things. Put a little of this warmth. It gets dark at the neck. And I'm going to come into my blue. Do some interesting things. So I'm going to come right under the nose. And let's start putting in that nostril, which is quite dark. Ooh, what am I doing there? Okay. This nostril is like the hardest nostril. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to start putting. Yeah, everybody's very the worried cast about cast of blue. What? Everyone's worried. Where they're they're concerned about the nose cross section. That's you know. Oh, it's such a thing. Listen, don't feel like it's just a thing for you. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's a thing. I'm just making sure that this is all really defined. I can even come back into this dark, dark color here because that's how dark it is. Mm -hmm. And make sure that it's, you know, really thought out here. You know, I'm oh my goodness, look at this whole thing. <laughs> <sighs> well, now he's got a crazy nose. Let's fix it. I think it's, it, I don't know. It's crazy. It looks like the shape of a nose <laughs> coming in. No. No, it's not what it's no. supposed to be there. I'm going to come with this. Look, I got an even smaller brush. Number two. Uh, this is oh. from my detail set, the Studio Filbert. Just have to make sure that we get this. And this comes down a bit. I've got to, what I have to get is his unusual highlights. Well, uh, what unusual highlights are there? The way his nose is highlighted and low lighted. Get some of my red going again. So I'm just trying to make sure that I, I guess what I would say is honoring the reference image while still appreciating
my art. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some glazing medium and blend that out. And again, I will be refining, refining, refining as this portrait goes on. But right now I'm just trying to get some, some information in. Let's go ahead and start deepening this nostril here. So I'm going to just come across. It comes down. There's sort of a dark shadow right here. So I just have to make sure that it, if it goes too high, he's going to look like he's snorting. <laughs> right. And that's what I'm trying to avoid is the snort. So I have to make sure that that is, you know, down enough and light enough. Yep. I grab some of my base skin tone and a little glazing medium. Mm, Julie is really excited when it zooms out. She's like, oh, I can see it coming together. Yeah, it's just oh, such a thing. And just the reason I'm talking out and even sharing with you, like, how it's a thing for me is because if you understand that it's a thing for everybody, you'll, you will be more settled in your experience. I'm getting my Prussian blue and a little of my burnt umber. And I'm going to catch a very important shadow. One right here. Super important. I don't know. I kind of. This comes up a little bit. I think a lot of the community sort of feels like the ugly stage of a painting is like the first drop on a roller coaster. You know it's coming, but you're not really prepared for you're it. You're really never prepared. I'm not prepared for it. None of us are prepared for it. You know, it's like, but then it's so exhilarating as you're in the middle of it because you're like, is it going to happen? Oh, what's going on? And then you're painting and painting and painting. And then you're, oh, you're, by the time you're getting to the other side of it, it's like, oh, I can see it coming together. And then you're enjoying the ride a little bit. This man's nose is going to be the end of me. I'm telling you right now. That was my reference for Trent. Was it? <laughs> now that I think about it, that totally was. I'm sure he'll get that. But. I'll put a little highlight right here. And then one, interestingly enough, right down here. And there's one on the inside of a nostril. And we'll be working this more. We're just making sure that we've got some basis in for what the heck is going on here. What the that heck we're going is going to on be there? What is going on? What is going on? I'm sure he doesn't mean to have a difficult nose, and I'm just trying to be very forgiving. Of him. They're saying be the cinnamon. <sighs> and is there a substitute for Prussian blue other than Prussian blue hue? <laughs> <laughs> so you could cool um, your thalo blue if you needed to. Mm. You could cool it with a with a black. Darken it, and it'll give you something sort of similar. But it's, it's like one of those things. It's like the flavor of Prussian blue without being Prussian blue. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's pull a little shadow down here. All right. I feel like we've got some of that worked out. Like we know where things are. Yep. Do we feel like we know where things are? Yeah. That shadow's in the wrong location. Is it? Yeah. Let's get it in the right place. Add a little of my full skin tone to it. No. Because it's more here to this side. And then it comes over a little bit. Now it's hard to know when and we're doing we're bring this. Bring this down. Is, you know, when are, are you know about how, where are we at in our process here? Are we getting about how we about halfway through this? What um you know we are getting about halfway through this. I'm just you know it's so hard for me to know from here where the. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to know from here. I'm just bringing some of this sort of very deep kind of color here, and I'm going to come around this side because we're going to have. Right, this facial hair that comes down. And I'm going to want to make sure that I've got this color as a base. This is a very deep skin color. Right? And that's going to be a lot of what I'm working, you know, initially up is this base skin color and then a little bit of a brown glaze. Well, I'd like to, Amber said something really nice here. I'd like to pass it on to you. Oh. She says, uh, she says, the Art Sherpa's openness has literally changed my whole art journey. I never thought I could paint, but turns out I just quit too soon. Needed more layers. <laughs> more layers, man. So thank you, Amber. That's nice. <laughs> you can work anything out with enough layers. I know Cinnamon doesn't get to see the chat, so I try I, to read I, some of these to her. I don't, and I always miss it. So, so um, I know there's this, this, this. I've got to get his eyes blocked in. Got to get his eyes. Mm-hmm. And his lips blocked in, which, oh, the lips. Okay. Lips are fun, so let's do those first. Let's take our base skin tone over towards our alizarin. 
right? And then I'm going to get a little Prussian blue. So it's base skin tone, a little alizarin, a little Prussian blue. That is going to be my lip shadow color. Hmm. And his lips are really interesting. This is in a uh, deep shadow here. Yes. They, all, all, all of them out here think that his lips are very interesting. <laughs> well, they're very pouty. <laughs> pouty. Yeah, and they have an interesting bow to them. So your big thing is going to be, can you get that bow? If you're going to capture it feeling like John. So can you capture John <laughs> Snow's pouty mouth? Can you? More blue. Get a real deep shadow right in the crease. This is going to be just the, the basis of everything. We just get that in. Do, 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 do. Now, around this side, his lip kind of is in foreshortened perspective. So I'm going to add that shadow here. Kit, you know, this actor is probably like, I don't have a pouty mouth. <laughs> I'm Jon Snow. King of the North. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know how I'd feel about like somebody that I, other than my kids, that I would paint them and then they would see it. I have no idea how I'd feel about that at all. <laughs> I'm going to actually grab the skin tone over here to help lighten the lip tone. Not white, but the skin tone. I'm going to come in and just get some color on these lips. He's going to look like he has lipstick for a little bit. I just need a base color to work up from. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to be shaving that down in a minute. But i got to get the bases in, or there isn't going to be anything to work from. All right, so we've got this sort of, like, stink face. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that witch is really creepy, <laughs> and I don't like it. Also, it's been really cold for a long time, and this whole place is full of zombies. Mm-hmm. I don't like those guys either. <laughs> uh. Just making sure I've got some color here. The base is just something to start from. If you have trouble getting your paint to come out, the glazing medium can help a lot, just getting it to flow and come off. And again, this is just one of the lip tones. We have many, many lip tones. Lots are happening in his lips, but we got to get this in. Mm. Or we won't have the rose base that we're looking for. And also just knowing where the shadows are and, and everything is going to be super helpful for us. So he's got his little mouth here. Mm. Now I'm going to take the skin tone, a little of the, the first color of skin tone and bring it over here. I'm going to add a smidge of black to it. Oh, my zinc skinned. Gosh darn it. Not enough time in the day. So I'm going to put a little white by, by where I'm working, so I'm not working so hard. You got paint there? Yeah, put a little paint there, so I'm not working so hard. So I've got this sort of grayish pink color, right? That is actually going to be the basis um, for my eyeball. Don't paint your eyeballs white. Like ever. Don't? No? No, because you need the white for the highlights, which is what's going to make it seem real and true. Oh, yeah. A little that more gray in it. I never even thought about that. A little more blue in it, man. You need this, you need to leave this a little more gray. Hmm. But do it with the skin tone, otherwise it won't, it, again, it won't seem true either. But darker than you think. And we all know eyes are kind of my jam. So just darker than you think. For the eye color. The first run of the eye color. And by um, using a little of the skin tone in it. When you gray it. It also makes it seem more alive. And mm. you know realistic. So I'm going to get into my. My brown and my base color. If I need to, like a little of my... Actually, I'm going to get a little shadow worked out here. Because he's got kind of a inside lid shadow going. We've got to talk about here. And then some stuff happening here. So we don't want to lose that. We just need to know it's there. Because we're blocking it. 
right? Yeah. It's blocking it in. And the nice thing is you can work on this and get caught up with me tomorrow. Let's get some dark color here. I'll just put blue in its place right now for a minute in this corner. Let's start talking about this over here, which is quite dark. I'm going to even grab some black into this. I'm always just improving the flow of my paint, but I've just got to make sure that I've got this. It's very, very dark. Even through here. He's going to look like he has crazy eyelashes for a second. <laughs> he's like, wait, what? What happened to me? In order now to he's me? getting some smoky eyes. He's going to get something. So I've got my dark skin tone. Right? I'm going to take my skin tone into my my brown and lighten it over here. I need another little shadow. Get his smolder on. Get his smolder on. It's just important that I... See, and this shadow helps to find the nose, too, by the way. We gotta make sure I have that. Now, once I have all this in and I've got this crazy basis in, I just, oh, darn it. Don't do that. Don't do what? I just made a brown smidge on his nose. We, I saw. I didn't know what, what, you know. Just knock it back. Just put it back. You're in an underpainting stage now, so nothing is so bad that it can't be rectified. See? Oh, by the way, if you didn't know how to fix that, that would be how you fix that one of those problems. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing so bad that you can't get it back. Now, I'm going to take my brown and my Prussian, even though he has a very light eye, I'm going to start out with a pretty dark color under here. And I'm going to breathe and breathe and mm. there we go. Just a pretty dark color under here. And then you can even take, crazily enough, this across because you're just trying to make sure those shadows are there. In your initial go. And again, same thing right here. Though he looks like he's got some crazy drama eyelashes going. <laughs> oh my gosh. So he should have a really kind of crazy look on his face right now. At this stage. You should be questioning all your life decisions about following this tutorial. But you're just trying to catch this sort of base value experience that you've got going on. Right. And there's a lot to adjust. Like there's a lot of micro adjustments around the nose. There's a lot of, you know, adjustments all around his face that you're going to be dealing with. Trying to get him to look like himself. And that's the struggle. Like, you know, we had it with Daenerys is the struggle of portraiture. Yeah. I will say, some of your friends just stopped by to say, hey, I, I saw Valerie from uh, Art a la carte. I think I just stopped by and said, hey. Really? So Hi, Valerie. <laughs> so Valerie is a tremendous painter and artist and sweetheart. Another one of our friends. We see her at some of our conventions and like to hang out. So. All right, let's just keep getting this red in here. Just red in here, red in here, red in here. Not enough. Not have enough red in here. I'm also, interestingly enough, going to take some of this red into my eye area. Right here at the front. Maybe kind of work that back here. But again, wow. he's gonna have a whole moment. He's got no eyebrows. <laughs> 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 sort of, sort of got that that uh, Doctor Evil look going on. <laughs> he does. He's got some stuff happening right now, and he should, because he's in a stage. This is a stage. Your paintings will have stages. This is this is the I had to build the fire in the morning. Look, <laughs> and got too close when it lit. <laughs> <laughs> it's something. You just want to make sure that you're good. So as long as we have this basis in where we're like, okay, we've got this sort of shaded. We can, like, if you're like, oh, my gosh, his nose is too pushed in, you can come right into the titanium white and lighten your base skin tone. 
right? And I'm seeing it. And you come along this ridge and unpug it. I pugged his nose a little bit. See? Mm. You can unpug it. Unpug it. Don't let him so have a pug nose. They were they were asking if we could uh you know, they weren't they weren't they weren't so sure they wanted a t shirt of this one, but there was an <laughs> overwhelming response about the idea of a body pillow. <laughs> So not my intellectual property. You know, yeah, unfortunately, guys, it's yeah, you know, it's not one that we can we you know we can't put this on a t-shirt or anything. But that's a good idea. I yes. thought that was a good idea. So I'm gonna get just for right now. I'm gonna get my brush has got a little of my skin tone on it. I'm gonna get just a little bit of white, and I'm gonna come under the eye, and make sure that I put in a little of his lower lid here, and we see actually quite a lot over here. So I just want to get that in because I have my blue uh, transfer line in there, and I don't, I don't necessarily want that. Take your. Um, I'm going to resist eyebrows right now. Okay, so let's take a minute and go. Take a. I'm going to step moment. back and look and observe him. Oh, hot mess time. <laughs> so uh, at this stage, I would say that Jon Snow has. Um, <laughs> he, really he's got that Vigo look day. to him right now. He uh, <laughs> took the black and they hazed him hard. <laughs> yeah. They're, they shaved his eyebrows and left him outside in the snow and he's upset. <laughs> I'm going to make cinnamon loser coffee, I think. <laughs> now, if you did Daenerys with me, you know we have a way through, so yes. we're going to keep going. But before we go, I want to get some of this texture in mm -hmm. through here. What time is it, babe? Uh, we're, we're just over an hour. We're just over an hour? Just over an hour. Hmm. What do you think? I'm thinking that if everybody could get him here... To this place, this is this is what I would call blocked in. Yeah, that's what we, right? were, we were just chatting about. That this is sort yeah. of that blocked in stage. So you loosely know he's got he's gonna have a dark shape here, and his hair is dark, and he's got kind of a highlight at the forehead, and you're gonna have a highlight at the cheek. We've got a lot of work to do the nose. We're gonna have to uh, sh cast this special shadow across his eye, and we're gonna put in his facial hair and this texture. I think we could do that tomorrow. Actually. Yeah, yeah I think. So, before you vote up or down, <laughs> come back tomorrow and see how I resolve Jon Snow. Because I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised how we go from here to something that's going to look quite a lot like the portrait. And if you're wondering how to do that, you can go check Daenerys and go, oh yeah, she does kind of do that. So, are you guys ready to meet tomorrow? Yes. I'm okay. not ready for this because I think it's pretty cool. I've been kind of enjoying watching this kind of go in there. Even though I, I like this, 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 this kind of understage. Actually, I like you to do? see. I do. I like to see this come in because I learn so much about tone sh and, and like. Okay, what I have to do one thing because I won't be able to sleep. Oh, it's okay. Well, yeah. I, otherwise, I'll paint it when we're off air. Yeah. I will. I know you will. So I will. But I, I really like this stage because I learn a lot about like how things are blocked in because I I don't really I don't have an artist eye naturally you right. know so watching the show because I kind of have to push the buttons I get to see. <laughs> you know how you assemble and block in the shadows on faces and actually all these different objects so it really allows me to see how they're constructed differently and um that's been a really good learning experience for me that's it yeah ah uh, this teaching this and doing this has been a really good learning experience for me i'm creating my shadow eye color again because i just don't want to go to sleep without him having you know his other shadow over here oh he just needs one, or I'm not going to be okay. Okay, so this is this is just getting it to the Sherpa resting place, so your brain won't. Otherwise, I'll be at it all night, and then you guys will be like, "Wait, you did a whole lot of painting." Yeah, she'll be coming. I'll be like, "I, you know, I now have to turn the camera on and record this, and make a time lapse of it, so I can give it to everybody." And she'll be like, "No, no, I'm just one thing, just one touch," and then she'll be there for like 20 minutes. I just want to make sure that we have this shadow coming in, you know, on both sides of the eyes and the figure so that tomorrow that's not our biggest thing that we're we're working out I just want to make sure that there's some shadow values here I'm not trying to give them makeup I just want to make sure we got a shadow <laughs> getting the getting the dark in well, while, 
I know that we're going to be going here soon. So what I'll do is I'll say that there are a bunch of community here that just wanted to say to okay. say hi to you and give you big hugs and love. They really appreciated you doing this. I know that, uh, and I'll take a stab at it. Sh- sh- <laughs> Shalua, Shalu. Mm-hmm. And All right, crazy stage. Let's back up. All right, but at least his eyes are shaded in the uh-huh. same way. So as we highlight them, you're gonna and feel better about that. Out, yeah, that's yeah. I can see that. I can see that bug in you. Yeah, like all night. But everybody like here, all the, night from a- all around the world, they wanted to say thank you, Cinnamon. They really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And this has just been really, really nice. There, th- this has just been a nice time with everybody. And we're having a great time out here in chat too. So. This has been nice. this has been a really great afternoon. Well, if you have a wet palette, put your paint into it so that your mixes will be there tomorrow, and you won't have to remake them. That like makes sense. I will. Wait, I have my wet palette somewhere. Do you remember? Yeah, I have a video on how to make a free one. We if do. You, if you don't have one and you want to make a free one and you happen to eat cake, cake, yes, cake trays from. <laughs> I got your hookup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Work remarkably well. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other, and let's come back tomorrow. And let's make Jon Snow the handsome hunk that he is when we finish this out and kind of mm-hmm. blow everybody's mind how it goes from this to how we finish. <laughs> I'll see you at these really soon. Bye bye. Oh, there we go. Oh, bye bye, guys. <laughs>